Uh, well, I'm going to start with you, uh, Gerard, and just where this sort of idea first came from and how long it's been brewing in your mind. Um, I made my first film, Pilgrim Hill, about a farmer fighting isolation and loneliness in rural Ireland, and then thankfully that did really well for me, and I got the opportunity to, I suppose, in a sense, move to Dublin after that. And, 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 and when I moved to Dublin, I kind of noticed that there was a huge amount of um, kids parenting their parents, in a sense, when it came to addiction. and taking control of their families and don't get me wrong that happens in rural Ireland also but it, it was kind of it was much much more prevalent to me there and, and I just looked at it and I saw it and I kind of put myself in, in, in those people's position and um, you know, thankfully I don't come from uh, a family with such issues but, but I, I, I kind of recognised it and empathised with these people who I was making friends with uh, when I moved to Dublin and that's where it kind of came from and kind of grew very organically from that and, and, um, and yeah and did you find the feature almost easier to put together, given sort of Pilgrim Hill's kind of critical sort of acclaim? Yeah, I mean, uh, Pilgrim Hill is very much kind of, um, you know, end of year project at college type of a thing. You know, why make a short when you can make a feature film? Like, and um, that was kind of my my mantra behind it. And um, this was, yeah, I mean, in terms of putting it together, it was like first port of call was Jack and, and Jack coming on board and then it was very much, um, you know, which, which which happened very quickly and then it was very much, you know, um, going after Tony Collette, who I really wanted and who Jack really wanted also. And we got Tony and then Will and, and Michael Smiley. So um, I was very, very lucky to kind of, and I don't think I realised it at the time, but like now I look back at it and go, it's a pretty awesome British cast, you know. Yeah, and, and not only that, I mean, Jack, obviously, as, as an actor, you have to spend a lot of time putting on other accents. Mm -hmm. It must be nice to have other people come to you and put on an Irish accent yeah, for a change. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of funny. Isn't <laughs> it? yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Tony was very good. She was, yeah. I mean, she's she's a chameleon. And a little bit like Will Poulter as well. I mean, um, they were so out of their comfort zone, in a sense. And they, they came and they embedded themselves in the community and in the world. And they, and they, and they just wanted to... Um, wanted to be as real as possible and, and I think they achieved that very much Will so. stayed in it the whole time with the accent mm -hmm. he wouldn't drop yeah. it so when I saw him months later and he was speaking to me with an English accent it was really throwing me a bit yeah it was, it was disturbing yeah. Yeah. I mean John is it's quite a, it's a sort of tough role I mean he's very nuanced and he keeps a lot of his kind of emotions sort of locked in mm -hmm. I'm just wondering but he must despite the kind of challenges it must have been a real joy to, to take on a, a layered creation of this absolutely yeah. yeah and I'd been away filming a franchise film for the entire previous year, um, which was, you know, a very fulfilling experience, but very, very different to this. A lot more physical and um, a lot more about marks and, you know, kind of precision, really, uh, where this was, you know, I guess about precision in a very different way, you know, you just had to be psychologically and quickly, emotionally, <laughs> yeah, quickly, faster, Jack, yeah, yeah, available exactly. enough, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just it was really uh, uh, an awesome opportunity. This film, and I must loved every minute of it. Must have been great as well to be back on on home soil after being out in the states, obviously shooting kind of Transformers. I mean, because I, I think guess that was the main element. Really, I just really wanted to be home in Ireland and doing something that I could relate to and something that I knew, um, so that I could kind of center myself again and and, and be grounded and, and and just come back home you know like it was the, that film was like a homecoming for me, for me from but I think I, and I think you can see it in his performance he was he was very much um, so glad to be home in a sense and he was very settled and he wasn't even thinking ahead I don't even think you had any mm -hmm. any interest in finding a job after Glassland he was just very focused on that and uh, I think you can see it in the performance you know and just to go back to the precision thing he was talking about marks and stuff there with this it was with Glassland, it was just about being quicker and faster all the time, and I think, yeah. uh, you know, that was such a vast thing from Transformers, you know? Yeah, we shot, like... Uh, 16, 17 days, and, you know, not a huge budget, not saying that was any, ever, ever, ever an issue, but it was, um, it was intense, and it was raw, and it was real, and it was visceral, and it was exciting, actually. Yeah, yeah. Exciting, and we did something you know? between 350 and 400 different setups in those, you know, 16 yeah. shooting days. That's a lot. That's an awful lot. So it was a real it was a real challenge, but you know, exactly what you want to do as an actor. I mean that the, the themes kind of explored are very prevalent in society. I mean I mean there's a lot of children and adults out there who have parents who are suffering from addiction and we very rarely focus on them in, in cinema. I was wondering if you if that's quite a surprise to you. This does feel like almost untapped territory in some ways. It 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 was for me, you know. It it was for me. It was like you know. I think the BBC have done it brilliantly, and I think 
in Ireland they've done a brilliant thing. We we very much focus on the person that has the disease of addiction. Um, we never focus on the victims around that person. And for me, it, it was very clear when I moved to Dublin that there is a story to tell of, you know, the people within the home that are dealing with these people. And and yeah, it was, you know, I didn't want to say it publicly or anything, but it, it very felt to me as something that was totally untapped. And I think that's why it has traveled so well. And that's why I think it has done so well, is that it's 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 a fresh take and a fresh, perspe- a fresh perspective on it. Yeah. We were obviously talking before about John being quite introverted, but at times he does completely let it all out. I was wondering if there was a couple of scenes in particular that must have been quite quite tough to shoot, I guess, it's particularly if you had to say cut and, and shoot them again because they're really quite intense. Yeah. Do you mean the screaming? The screaming, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's hard for me because uh, I, have, I have a real problem with violence and aggression towards women. Like, I mean, I hate to be in an environment that's threatening in any way to a woman, do you know? Um, so, you know, Tony just turned around to me in the front seat of the car before we shot the scene. It wasn't really a scripted scene. It was one that I just kind of went in and yeah. said what I had to say to her. Um, and she turned around and she said, look, you, you can really just like go for it. I can take it, you know? And I was like, okay, cool. And we went for it. And, you know, when I got to the end of the first take, I turned and she was just like in streams of tears and... I was just like, fuck, man, I've made her cry, you know? <laughs> it was horrible, really, really difficult. It was but, amazing uh, for me. I but, I thought, but I thought it went I thought it went great, you know? I was really happy with with how it turned out in the end, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, difficult. But I think I think what you get with... We only did two takes on that as well. Like, you can't yeah, really you sustain couldn't. something like that for... The car wouldn't take tremendous it. Tremendous amount of time, yeah. The car has been battered. But, no, I think that's what you get when you cast really good people like Tony and Jack is they give you so much more than what's on the page. Yeah. Like that's what you want, you know. This is the page is, the script is the blueprint, but you want people to elevate that. And there, there is, my, my, well, I'm not saying favourite's probably the wrong word, the most memorable scene, I think, in the film is obviously, I mean, John is very adverse to his mother's addiction, but there's that one scene where they drink together. And mm-hmm. I was just wondering what the, the thinking was behind that, that moment. That was, um, from day one, we agreed in what it was. That was an interrogation scene, you know. He could, the, way, the only way he could, he could get to the truth of his mother and to, to try and figure out her logic of why she was doing this to her family and to herself was, you know... Had to meet her on her level, basically. Meet her on her level, in a sense, and, and get, get drunk with her, uh, in a sense. Not saying John's character did get drunk. He allowed her to go to that state and and then he kind of extracted the information he needed so it was very much and we did approach it as an interrogation Mm -hmm. scene and you know I think you can feel that you know when you're watching it you can feel there's something like something going down here and it was very much um, that was the plan you know and uh, and again it was one of those moments where it was just elevated way more than I ever thought it could be yeah, that's right, because obviously we're very sort of intrigued now to see what you've you've got planned next, Gerard. It's I'm the piece's brain on fire. Is yeah. that true? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's that one all about then? That's about based on a New York Times bestselling memoir, Brain on Fire, and um, uh, by Susanna Cahalan, and it's about a young girl who kind of has it all and loses it all very quickly. She gets diagnosed with this mystery illness, um, she's put into hospital for, um, you know, a month, and and she's you know millions worth of tests are put into her to figure out what this is and, and nobody can figure it out and um, so she finds herself in you know the most isolated and lonely environment that anybody fears to find themselves in you know and um, it's a story of her and how she pulls through it and her family around her and her boyfriend and it's a medical horror mystery drama thriller it's got all them elements going on so it's a really cool project and the book came to me through Charlize Theron and um you know, herself and, um, you know, Dakota and uh, Will Poulter and, and numerous other casts that we're going to announce really soon are in it, and so we're shooting that really soon. So it's very exciting. Different world to what I'm used to, but, you know, different budget, but I'll be making the same decisions I make every day, whether it's on a 300,000 euro film or whether it's on a however budget, you know. Yeah, and of course, I mean, you've got some exciting projects yourself coming up. I mean, Macbeth, of course, is, is not too far from release. And then Jungle Book Origins. I was wondering how you fit into both of those stories character-wise. Mm, well, uh, I'm playing Malcolm and Macbeth, which is great. And uh, I think that Justin Kurtzel, the director of Macbeth, uh, was really interested in <clears throat> bringing a bit more substance to that role and trying to portray it in such a way that hadn't really been seen before um so you know it was really fun and he is just an exceptional director and i felt very safe and very comfortable with him and i was up for whatever he wanted to do you know 
Um, so I'm really pleased with that film and uh, I think that Fassbender is just exceptional in it and Marion Cotillard as Lady Macbeth is really breathtaking so I'm very excited about that film coming out I think it's going to be really good and then Jungle Book um, again I'm playing kind of a smaller supporting role in that film but it's uh, I mean it's it's based on Rudyard Kipling's novel so it's a lot darker than the Disney Jungle Book um, and it's Andy Serkis directing, which is kind of an amazing thing to be part of a project that he's uh, at the helm of himself, you know. Uh, he's a wonderful guy in so many ways, and uh, I was really honoured that he would have me to work with him. Yeah. Um, so it was great, an amazing cast on that film as well. We were all very much outside of our comfort zones, crawling around on the ground with arm extensions and, you know, cameras mapping our faces, but amazing, just a great experience. And of course, you mentioned Justin Kozel before. I mean, what with his... Obviously, Snowtown was an incredible mm. drama, and he's obviously gone on to make sort of Macbeth. And as for yourself, I mean, after Glassland, you're sort of moving, again, moving up to kind of uh, to Brain on Fire. I'm just wondering, is it quite encouraging for young filmmakers and sort of up-and-coming filmmakers at the moment that it seems people are paying attention? You know, I think that we've seen Godzilla and, and the kind of new Jurassic Park are, are being directed by sort of smaller independent filmmakers, and people are being given this this chance to show their worth on bigger budgets and stuff. I was wondering if that's quite an encouragement to you. It is, but I mean, you can show your worth with a smaller budget as well. You, you don't necessarily need to have $300 million to make a, a really cool film or a really good film. And um, for me, the budget is only a number. At the end of the day, you know, when the lights go down and people are sitting in the theater wanting to watch it, it's the same size screen. You know, you're shooting on the same camera as all these people. So it's, it's very much about the story and what it's about. But it is encouraging and it is, you know, I think, you know, there's a lot of negativity at times about the whole VOD thing and all that stuff going on. But I think what it does, it it, it, it allows more people to see your film and it allows the industry to see your film probably a bit more than the, it would, uh, in a sense, in the old traditional way. So, you know, you're you're very much, um, if you want to be seen by, by the industry and where all these decisions are made, you can be seen now, very much so. And it's very encouraging and exciting. And just finally, if uh, if you want it, I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> if you want to go off and make a three hundred million dollar film, and uh, and just finally, uh, Jack, I was just wondering. Of course, you've obviously moved between <clears throat> from sort of like what Richard did to then to do sort of Transformers and back to Glasslands. Can you see yourself doing that across your career? Can you see yourself moving between the Jungle Books and, and the Glasslands of the world? Can you sort of like try? Uh, I'd really like to have as diverse of a career as I possibly can. I don't care about. Um, my profile really as an actor I don't I'm not in it to get bigger and bigger uh, I'm also not in it to make a you know fortune for myself either I'm only in it because I love to act and create you know characters and, and, and perform and you know, like you're saying, Jungle Book is a million miles away from Glassland, which is a million miles away from Transformers and any of the films that I've done. And if I can continue to make very different films or things that have never been done before, then that's what I'm going to continue to do. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Much Thanks. appreciated. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!